because I'll be off the live screen. I'll be using the whiteboard here, so just remind me. So we are discussing about the Faraday's law. So I hope if you have uh, watched the YouTube video which I had shared on your WhatsApp group. So here, uh, the electromagnetic force or electromotive force will be induced or it arises due to two conditions. So Faraday conducted a series of experiment. He observed if this is a closed path, if this is the closed path, and if this is static, if this is not moving, and you have a varying magnetic field, if you have a changing magnetic field here, so the B is varying, then you could see the EMF is induced on the surface of this path. EMF is induced on the surface of this path. So this induced EMF can be given as negative rate of change of flux with respect to time. See here, flux is varying with respect to time. Flux B is varying with respect to time and EMF induced is negative rate of change of flux. This minus sign indicates that EMF is in such a direction as to produce the current whose flux is added to the original flux. And the original flux would reduce the magnitude of the EMF. And this reduced voltage across the path which is produced and which opposes the flux is known as Lenz law. It's known as Lenz law. So EMF is a scalar quantity, isn't it? EMF is a scalar quantity and is given by and is given by EMF is equal to electromotive force is equal to E is equal to line integral of E into TL which is equal to I can equate this now which is equal to minus d phi by dt but what is phi equal to flux can be given as surface integral of bds right but the flux can be given as surface integral of BDS. So substitute this phi. If I call this as equation one, substitute phi in equation one. Therefore, EMF is equal to minus d by dt surface integral of B into Ds. Okay. So I can uh, now I could write the final EMF equation as EMF is equal to E which is also equal to line integral E into TL, which is equal to minus D by DT of surface integral B TS. So this equation <coughs> is known as Faraday's Lenz law equation. And this equation is also called as transformer EMF equation. I repeat, 
this equation is also called as transformer emf if i take this differentiation inside the integral part so this equation would appear something like this surface integral minus dou b by dou t into ds so this equation or this emf is also called as transformer emf okay i just uh, started with the lens law the lens law is nothing but the emf induced with respect to the closed path is equal to the negative rate of change of flux with respect to time and there will be two conditions when the emf is induced so as i said one is already been stated here that is transformer emf so before i take up those conditions one by one let me just introduce what are those two conditions there are two conditions where the emf electromotive force will be induced in closed path the first condition the first condition is okay already discussed closed path is fixed and field is varying b is so the emf which is induced in the closed path due to varying field is known as transformer emf and in the second condition second case when b is fixed or b is static field is static and path is moving path is moving and in this case emf is induced with respect to the path and that emf is known as generator emf generator emf so here i would just like to illustrate the same example which was shared on your whatsapp group so there was a closed path circular ring and they have connected a bulb and this bulb was in a off state say for example this bulb was in an off state and you had a magnetic field or you had a permanent magnet which was kept here and when you and obviously this magnetic field will have a magnetic flux lines okay which are moving from north pole to south pole and see guys now in this first case i'm going to make this closed path static just not moving <clears throat> path is fixed and now if i try to move this magnetic field okay if this b is varying with respect to this closed path you could see the emf is induced on to this closed path and the bulb will <coughs> will be turned on when you try to move this magnetic field or this bar magnet inside and out of this particular closed path so in this situation the emf which is generated you call it as transformer emf the emf which is induced on to the closed path is called as 
transformer emf <clears throat> and this is first case now if i take the second case with respect to a generator emf now what i'll do i will have a magnetic field which is static okay and this produces what a flux lines and this magnetic field is static now this is not moving now if i try to move a closed path okay so again i'll connect this to a bulb which is in an off state initially and now if this b is fixed <coughs> Hello. Hmm. Illa. The class is not going to be done. So here, yeah, if B is fixed, and uh, say this closed path, this closed path. Now this is moving. Closed path is varying. Again, the EMF is induced. emf will be induced and you could see the bulb would be on the on state and this kind of emf induced due to the motion of the closed path with respect to a static magnetic field with respect to a static magnetic field again the emf is induced on the closed path you call this type of emf as generator emf Okay, <clears throat> this generator EMF will be obtained using the charge particles Q moving with some velocity v in a magnetic field B. <clears throat> this EMF is calculated with respect to the total force experienced by the charge particles in this conductor. See here, the charges will be here on the conductor. and this charge particles will experience the force due to this static magnetic field when this path is brought into the contact so this charges will get dis disturbed or this charges will be at the motion due to this force been experienced by this magnetic field on the charges thereby producing this emf so i'll be using this condition what is this equation this is a lorentz force equation if you remember from our previous uh, class lorentz force equation i will be using lorentz force equation in order to find out generator emf and in with respect to a transformer emf i have already obtained the equation so you can recollect which was followed by a lenz law so this is a transformer emf equation which i have obtained using lenz law is it okay so now i'll be taking the second case in order to <clears throat> if if you want me to revise i'll just revise this with uh, the first part is am audible yes sir okay fine so transformer emf with respect to the first case please make a note whenever we discuss these things on the online or uh, make a brief note maybe after the end of the session it's always good so transformer emf is given by emf is equal to e dl which is equal to minus surface integral to be by dot t into ds so this gives a transformer emf <clears throat> so how to uh, convert this uh, line integral to a surface integral so use stokes theorem use stokes theorem to convert a line integral to a surface integral so what happens to the line integral so it will be a curl of 
E into ds, which is equal to surface integral minus dou b by dou t into ds. Now, if you carefully observe the integral components here, so the integral components, if I try to equate the integral components, so I would get curl of E is equal to minus dou B by dou T. <clears throat> and this is, see so this equation is a point form, point or differential form of a generator, sorry, a transformer EMF, which is also one of four Maxwell's equations. Two we have already derived in electrostatics, and this happens to be the first electrostatics and magnetostatics. Two already derived in electrostatics and magnetostatics each. And this happens to be the third one. Okay, third Maxwell's equation, and we have left out with one more Maxwell's equation, which will be derived in modified ampere circuital law case in coming session. <clears throat> Hope you will remember this equation. This is a differential form of a Maxwell's equation, also known as transformer EMF. And this is an integral form, obviously. This is an integral form. <clears throat> Now we shall take up the case, second case, that is generator EMF. Hope you have made a note of this. Is that okay? Shall we go to the second uh, condition of uh, inducing EMF with respect to moving path with a constant field? Excuse me. Yes, I need some response here, guys. Yes, sir. So, okay, fine. So, we shall go to the second case. Generator EMF. So in this case, as I already illustrated an example, path is moving. Moving path and static magnetic field and static magnetic field <coughs> path is moving and magnetic field is static so let us consider a charge q okay so this charge q is moving with a velocity v and a constant magnetic field b so what is the relationship between this Q, V and B with respect to the force on the charge. So there will be a force on this charge quantity and that can be obtained using Lorentz force equation F or magnetic force F is equal to Q, V cross B. Okay, so Q, V cross B. And uh, what is f by q is equal to we know that force per unit charge is equal to what electric field e therefore f by q here fm by q is equal to v cross b here the v is yes it's a velocity <clears throat> remember it's a velocity so not potential and velocity is a vector quantity 
So this FM by Q is known as induced EMF or EM, which is equal to V cross V. So this is an induced EMF due to a moving path in a static magnetic field. Therefore, I'll write the final EMF equation. EMF is equal to close the line integral EDL, which is equal to Again, the line integral V cross V TL. And this EMF is called as motional or generator EMF or flux cutting EMF. It's called as motional or generator EMF, also called as flux cutting EMF. So what is generator EMF? If you're trying to move the path in static magnetic field, there will be an in EMF induced onto this moving path. So now it is uh, quite evident from Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction that if you have a, a path, a closed path, okay, and you have a magnetic field, you have a magnetic field, either you move this field or you vary this field with respect to time with a static path, there will be an induced EMF onto this path or you keep this fixed and vary this path with respect to time. Again, there will be an induced EMF. What happens if both are varying with respect to time? What happens if B is also varying? with respect to time and this path, this entire path is also varying with respect to time. Then there will be a total EMF which is generated and that EMF is called the total EMF is equal to <coughs> line integral EDL which is equal to, I'll write it as transformer EMF plus generator EMF. This is the total EMF which is generated due to the motion of both the magnetic field plus the coil or the path or the conductor or the charges. You can call it anything. Here if this both, if both are moving, then the total EMF induced is transformer EMF plus generator EMF. You can write those equations as minus surface integral. Write it down. Dou B by dou T ds plus this is line integral V cross B dl. So this is total EMF. <clears throat> so Faraday's law is the combination of uh, both the laws like transformer EMF and motional EMF or generator EMF. Hope this is clear. Guys, is it clear now? Yes, sir. 